Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy and if you are new around here then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell as well to be notified of all of my uploads. I upload art videos every single week on my channel so make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss out on all the fun on my channel. Today I have a new tutorial for you. Today we're going to be painting an owl in an expressive and loose watercolour style. I am using the Cotman watercolour set of 45 half pans for this tutorial and I also have all of the other materials listed down below in the description as well. Before I jump into this one I just wanted to let you know that I have the full real-time version of this over on my Patreon so that is recorded in real time from start to finish. I talk about all of my processes, all of my techniques and everything that I'm doing in that tutorial. If you would like to check out my Patreon I do have that listed in the description box down below. But without further ado, let's just jump right into this tutorial. So I am going for a very expressive, very loose and very colourful art style for this piece and what I like to start by doing first is I like to start off by creating that wash of clear water on the paper. I'm using a medium sized brush from Daily Rani. I think this is one of the Aquafine brushes and what I did was I put um, just some clear water into the background and I made sure that I had quite a lot of water so that I can create this sort of bleeding effect when I go in with the watercolours themselves. It's really important that you don't create puddles or soak the paper completely because if you do that you're going to have a real mess on your hands. You want to make sure that the paper is just wet enough. Then once I've got that paper nice and wet, I like to go in with the Cotman watercolours. I tend to mix colours on the palette first before I go in with the background, just so that I can just pick colours up and just very quickly drop them into the paper. I'm going for a sort of midnighty effect, so I'm using a lot of deeper, richer colours, particularly a lot of blues, purples and greens, but I'm also dropping in some lighter, more vibrant tones as well. I also got the reference photo from Pixabay, I think it's a fantastic site, they have all royalty free photos on there which means that you can actually download those photos, there's no attribution required and you can create whatever artwork you want from there and also sell your artwork as well. So I got this photo from Pixabay and I use the reference photo in terms of like colour scheme and all sorts. So obviously I didn't follow the reference photo exactly but in terms of the colours I did get a lot of my inspiration from the background and from the owl itself and as I said I went for a very dark, very deep, very rich um, look in terms of the background and I also created a lot of a splattery effect as well by using a plastic straw and what you just saw me doing a second ago was actually blowing through the straw and what that does is that allows the colour that I'm putting down on the paper to travel in a very splattery and expressive effect. I also use the straw as well to blow the different colours into each other as well just to create that sort of marbling effect and make sure that we have a really nice even blend of colours. I then like just to add a little bit more expression to the piece and to do that I get my paintbrush, I'm using that medium sized brush from De La Rowney, and what I do is I start to just drop and splatter some different colours into the background and to do that I just wet down the paintbrush, I pick up some paint from the palette and I literally just tap onto the end of the brush and then it just drops that in there as well. And then that obviously creates that sort of very splattery effect. Then what I do is I wait for the background to dry. I waited about an hour because I actually use two small desk fans and I have it on a very low, very slow and very cool setting. And I use that to make it dry quicker and then after about an hour the paper is dry to the touch and it's fully dry and absorbed as well. 
Then once the paper is dry, I then work on the owl itself. I start with the eyes. So I'm starting with like those black outlines, just using black watercolor from the half pans. And I start with the eyes first, just because I like to get those in first for like the expression. At this stage, I'm also using a very small detailed brush just to help make sure that I keep the preciseness and the accuracy of the eyes and all the fe features in the bird as well. Then I get to work on the feather texture around the face of the owl and I'm very very loose with this process and to make sure that I'm being quite loose with my layers and my process, I use a lot of water. What I do is I create very light layers of colour, so I'll have like colours watered right down and then I just create those layers and then I start to drop other colours into the different areas. So there you can see me dropping in some reddy tones, some brownie tones as well. And I work on different stages of the owl as well, just to make sure that each area of the owl is starting to dry. I want to make sure that I allow like the different layers to dry first before I start going in and adding in like uh, more darker tones and values. So it's all a really gradual process and obviously this is a, a, sp a sped up version as well so what you're not seeing is the fact that I'm actually waiting for just different areas to dry before I go in and add even more colours. And then as I start to build up on all of those layers, as you can see, the tones are becoming a lot more darker, a lot more vibrant and there's a lot more value as well. I'm leaving some areas more free of watercolours as well, so I'm not really applying a lot of watercolours into those areas, I'm just really applying just a very very light wash of colours. And that's just to make sure again that we have that contrast, we don't want to have like the owl looking just one tone or not having like little specks of details or feathers and things. Also in this tutorial I will be going in with white gouache and also some black paint as well just to add a little bit more detail to the owl's face and the body and branch and things and also just to give it more of an expressionist feel and to create that more looser effect. I'm now working on the tail of the owl and again the same sort of process I'm just gradually working in layers so just dropping in some lighter tones and then adding in some yellow going in with some darker value at the tip of the tail so the darker browns and things and I'm just dropping that in and just being really careful with where I'm applying that paint. Also notice how I'm not really um, working too much into the watercolours, I'm really just letting it bleed in itself and the reason why I'm doing that is because you don't want to overwork watercolours because you'll start to get um, a real mess on your hands, all the colours will become quite muddied. Then for the branch itself, I'm creating quite a bit of texture there just by using that paintbrush in lots of different directions and also just dropping in lots of different tones into the branch as well. So see there, I'm starting to apply some greeny tones and some reddy tones and some yellow as well. And then for a bit more value, I just like to intensify the darkness in the branch and the shadows and things. So now we're moving on to the white gouache. This is the white gouache paint from Windsor and Newton and gouache is different to watercolours. It's sort of in between watercolour and acrylic so it's thicker than watercolour but thinner than acrylics but it's also very fast drying as well. What I do to get this white gouache with the same texture that it's got there is that I just apply a little bit of water and I create a milky texture with the gouache and then I start to go in and I start to add in some highlights into the owl. I use the reference photo to help me with this and I just start to add in any areas that I really want to brighten and lighten and, and highlight and things. I create little details in the owl's face and the feathers as well based on the reference photo. And I love using white gouache paint, I think it works really really well for this sort of effect that I'm going for. It adds a lot more expression to the piece, it's very um, colourful, very vibrant as well and it looks a lot more looser as well. 
Again, I'm using that really small precise paintbrush and the reason why I'm using the small paintbrush is to just make sure that I'm quite careful with where I'm applying this, just making sure that I'm getting it into all the areas that I want to. I'm also adding some white gouache paint to the branch itself to create that loose and scratchy effect on the branch. And I'm going in lots of different directions as well with the paintbrush. So I'm sort of creating like the lines and then sort of crossing it over as well to create that branch texture. And as this is an illustration, I am obviously being quite messy with this as well. I'm not worrying too much about where I'm applying this, that and the other. I'm just really being quite messy, quite fluid and I'm being quite loose with my techniques. I'm also creating splatter effects in the background as well using the white gouache and using the small paintbrush as well. I also started to flick the paint into the background as well just to create really little specks of uh, white gouache paint and to create that really nice starry effect. And then as a lasting result and effect what I like to do is I like to go in with some black uh, watercolour and some dark brown and what I like to do is I like to just add in a little bit more darker value and um, just some more darker outlines because where we've gone in with the white gouache we've lost a little bit of the sort of detail in the bird so adding in the black and the dark brown just really helps to sort of redefine those areas. Again I do this stage using the very small and precise paintbrush. And I have also waited for the paint to dry as well, although it might not look it, I have made sure that I've done that. And then this actually finishes off this tutorial today. I hope that you picked up lots of helpful tips for how I create this very loose and very expressive effect. And as I said, this video is available on Patreon. Make sure that you do head over there if you'd like to check that video out. It is available for the $9 patrons. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure that you do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell as well if you are new around here. And of course, I will be uploading another video very soon for you. Bye everybody!